Those aren't Qurans, are they? No. You're not going to burn these books, are you? Well, the thought had crossed my mind. No! Don't burn these books. Books are filled with valuable information. Here, let me randomly pick one and open to a random page. Uthman sent to every Muslim province one copy of what they had copied and ordered that all the other Quranic materials, whether written in fragmentary manuscripts or whole copies, be burnt. Let me see that. Uthman ordered that all other Quranic materials be burnt. So there's already been a burn the Quran day. But why, Nabil? I don't know, David. Perhaps one of these other books that are filled with valuable information can help. It's a good thing you didn't burn them. Let's take a look at one at random. Oh, here's one. Sahih Muslim. Abu Musa al-Ashri sent for the reciters of Basra. They came to him and they were 300 in number. They recited the Quran and he said, You are the best among the inhabitants of Basra, for you are the reciters among them. So continue to recite it. But bear in mind that your reciting for a long time may not harden your hearts, as were hardened the hearts of those before you. Good. Wow! It says they had their hearts hardened. Well, what happened next? Let's keep reading and find out. We used to recite a surah which resembled in length and severity to Surah Barat. I have, however, forgotten it, with the exception of this which I remember out of it. If there were two valleys full of riches for the son of Adam, he would long for a third valley, and nothing would fill the stomach of the son of Adam but dust. And we used to recite a surah which resembled one of the surahs of Musabihat, and I have forgotten it. So this is saying that two chapters of the Quran are missing because Muslims forgot them. Let me see that. You're right. This is saying that two entire chapters are missing because Muslims forgot them. Hey, Nabil, look at this. Ubay was the best of us in the recitation of the Quran, yet we leave some of what he recites. Ubay says, I have taken it from the mouth of Allah's messenger and will not leave it for anything whatever. Wasn't Obay the best reciter of the Qur'an? Yes! And wasn't he one of the best forward teachers of the Qur'an? Yes! But he says stuff in his Qur'an that is not in this Qur'an. Let me pick a random verse from this Qur'an and read it. Ah, Surah 33, verse 6. The Prophet is closer to the believers than their own selves, and his wives are their mothers. Oh look, here's a footnote. In some Qiras, like that of Obay ibn Kaab, occur also the words, and he is a father of them. So Ubay, one of Muhammad's top teachers of the Quran, had words in his Quran that aren't in this Quran. But was he the top teacher of the Quran? Surely Zayd ibn Thabit, who put together the Quran we have today, was Muhammad's top Quran expert. Well, actually, Ibn Masood was the first name that Muhammad mentioned when it came to learning the Qur'an. You know, surely one of these books would have something about him. Oh look, here it is. I heard the Prophet saying, learn the Qur'an from four, Abdullah ibn Masood, Salim, Mu'ad, and Ubay bin Kaab. I wonder what Muhammad's top teacher of the Qur'an has to say about it. Let me pick up another one of these books at random. Here's one. The people have been guilty of deceit in the reading of the Quran. I like it better to read according to the recitation of him whom I love, more than that of Zayd ibn Thabit. Wow, according to that book you're holding, Muhammad's top teacher of the Quran is saying reading today's Quran is like being guilty of deceit. I wonder if any of these other books have something to say about it. Here, let me look at this one. Oh, there it is. Oh, you Muslim people. Avoid copying the Mus'haf and recitation of Zayd bin Thabit. By Allah, when I accepted Islam, he was but in the loins of a disbelieving man. And it was regarding this that Abdullah bin Masood said, O people of Al-Iraq, keep the Masahif that are with you and conceal them. So Muhammad's top teacher of the Quran says that today's version is deceptive and that we should avoid copying and reading it. But now I'm confused, Nabil. Muslims have always told me that the Quran has been perfectly preserved right down to the letter and that the evidence proves this. That, that, that's what I was always taught. I'm sure one of these books will tell us that the Quran was perfectly preserved. 
How about that one? Let's see. It was narrated that Aisha said, the verse of stoning and of breastfeeding an adult ten times was revealed, and the paper was with me under my pillow. When the messenger of Allah died, we were preoccupied with his death, and a tame sheep came in and ate it? The verse of stoning and the verse of breastfeeding? David, are these verses in the Quran? No! Then why not? Because Aisha's sheep ate them! David, we should read all these books and get to the bottom of this. So let me see if I've got this right. Muhammad died, and no one had compiled the Quran. The people who had memorized large sections of the Quran were sent into battle by Abu Bakr, and they were slaughtered. Muslims lost a ton of the Quran that day. Abu Bakr didn't want to lose any more, and so he had Zayd ibn Thabit put together what was left and compiled it into a manuscript. And soon thereafter, people started compiling their own manuscripts, and large disputes began to happen over what should be included in the Qur'an. Ibn Masud had only 111 chapters in his Qur'an, while Ubay ibn Ka'b had 116 chapters. And Zayd, who, who compiled today's Qur'an, only had 114 chapters. According to Muslim sources, entire chapters of the Qur'an were lost. Large sections of chapters have been lost. Individual verses have been lost. And in the end, Uthman put together what he could, put out his own official version of the Quran, and burned all of the evidence. Wow. Sure, I'm glad that no one burned this evidence. Nabil, let's agree that we're never going to burn any book, no matter how much we disagree with it. Yes.